Hey everybody, uh, I decided to cut this next video into two sections. It's a bit long. Nobody wants to watch a 30 minute YouTube tutorial about Touch OSC, or do you? So you can see this first set of three tips and tricks uh, today, and I'll release the next one starting on number four uh, in another week or so. So check those out and enjoy. Hey everybody, welcome back to another video tutorial about Touch OSC. Today we're going to work with Mark II and we're going to look at some tips and tricks to make your Touch OSC template a little bit better. Now we're gonna look at a few different ways to enhance your template, and these should work with any DAW, uh, because we're not going to implement the signals, we're just gonna set things up in the template. We'll talk a little bit more about setting up those signals later, but first let's jump in, and of course let's make sure we have our iPad set up, connected via the bridge to the editor on the computer, and let's go ahead and make the template. So tip number one comes from a question that somebody had about nudging your faders up and down. So let's make some nudge buttons. Uh, and this, when I originally made this, I was using uh, Reaper, but this should, like I said, work with any DAW. So first things first, in the editor, so we're in our editor, let's go ahead and make two buttons. Line those guys up, and then we need a fader. And let's imagine that we're gonna control volume. So let's go ahead and add a label here and let's just call this volume. So down to text over default and let's call that volume. So with these buttons, let's make them look a little cooler. I like arrows. So let's turn these into rectangle to triangle. And of course we have the up one and let's take this down one and change the orientation to south. And let's make them a little bit bigger too big to make them easier to work with. Nice. And so when we push this button, it'll move the fader up, push this button, it'll make move the fader down. So to do this and make these buttons work, we're going to use a script. So here's the script we're going to use. You can see it says local fader underscore one. Uh, so this is the name of our fader. So it could be just fader one, we could change that script, but in the script I've already written underscore one, so let's select the fader, and we're gonna say underscore one. All right, and let's go back to that, select all, copy, and then we're gonna paste this in the top arrow. So let's scroll down to script and paste that in. So it's gonna move up local increment of 0 0.05. So when we push this, it's gonna move up that much. Now let's select the down arrow, script, and what we're gonna do is after local increment, before the zero, we're gonna add a minus. And so that'll go down. So this button will push the fader up, this will push it down. So let's go ahead and try that out on the iPad here. Oh, look at that. You can push it up and push it down. Now to make this work in your DAW, of course you would add a MIDI signal or an OSC signal to your fader. And if you're working in Reaper, you could also add the action, I believe it's like 40016, that's the action ID uh, for nudge up. You could just go ahead in your action list and search what the nudge action IDs are. And if you recall from that previous Reaper video about uh, sending action IDs, you can implement that OSC into those buttons. Next up, let's look at organizing your template with pagers. So we can go ahead and delete this, we don't need that. Right click, and we're gonna add a pager. And this is a way you can get different tabs on your OSC uh, app, and you can make them uh, even have pages within pages. So as you see on your iPad, you can just click around these. What I like to do on these though, so you uh, move down here, for all of these options, I like to make the main one on my page a double tap, because I don't want to accidentally move around. And then I also do like to have them color coded. Uh, so let's just make this first one green, make the next one red, and then we'll make three blue. And we don't need any messages from these tabs, 
they're just gonna keep our page organized. So now, on your iPad, you should see these different pages. And of course, you touch these buttons, you double click them, you can move around, but not much is changing. So now we're going to, we have it selected. And of course, you can see here on the right, we have number one selected, double click, and now we are within the page of one. Let's go ahead and add a button. Let's add a couple, just so we can show what's going on here. And you can see in the document tree where we're at. We're under page one. Let's go back to the full document. And of course, we can see that on our iPad. Let's go to number two. And you can check that here. Double click, we're in. And let's add a label. And let's say a fader or two. And then let's go back again just to see. So now as we click around on our iPad, you can see we're operating within each different page. And that can be really useful. Um, let's do one more though. Okay, so let's go now to the tab three. Select that. Double click in. And let's add another pager. Let's say within this page you've got a couple different faders. And those just exist here. But you have a variety of different buttons you want inside this area. A cool way to make this work, let's select this and let's remove the outline. Because we're going to make this blend in. And then you can also remove the background. So we're going to have each pager. Let's also make them their own color. Each tab its own color just so it looks like a new area. And then let's uh, double click in here and we'll add a couple more buttons. And again, this isn't really functional right now. Let's actually make these toggles just to show it. And then let's go back out, select number two, let's go in here and we'll add a couple other buttons. Let's go back out. So now on your iPad, you can see when you double click on panel three, you still have these faders here on the right hand side that are active, but you can also go within this page to a couple other spots. This is a great way to keep your template organized, especially if you have, uh, let's say different articulations that you're using for a VST, or you have another instrument and you want to, let's say, uh, control a couple oscillators. So you want a whole bunch of uh, different buttons to control, let's say your reverb and your delay. It's kind of a great way to hide uh, any mess in there. And of course, keep the faders still on that page no matter what. Now a note about doing this with OSC messages. As you notice here in the template, we are in, if we go all the way back out, this is page three. So let's go into page three. This fader here, its name is slash three fader. So you have parent name here. So just watch out for that in your OSC messaging in case it needs to be just track name like we showed in previous videos. All right, next up, let's look at some local messages. Let's say you have a label and it's underneath a different articulation. So when you hit a button, you want that label to show a different uh, you know, set of data, a different articulation. Let's show how to do that with local messaging. And you may recall that we did something similar in a previous video with scripts, but this way we're gonna do it just with a local message. Okay, so let's add a label and let's add a button. Make it a little bit bigger to work with and let's make these kind of like a greenish this time. Green, blue. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this button and something's gonna happen. We're gonna push it again and it's gonna change it. So let's select this button. Let's go ahead and make it a uh, toggle press. Let's make it a toggle. So we are currently not sending any signals. Uh, so let's get rid of that MIDI. Let's get rid of the OSC. And let's add a local message. So what we have here is on trigger, which we want it to be on fall. So when we push this, the source, let's make it constant because this is what we're going to change. We're going to call it off. And the target, 
there's this little eyedropper tool here. Click that, highlights yellow, and we want to select our target, which is this label. This is what we want to change. And you can see that says label six. If we select this, that is also the name of this object. So let's go ahead down here and we have label six selected. The next thing we need is we need to turn this into a string. So we now have something on fall, we need something on rise. Let's add a local message. So this is another one and not on any, we want this on rise. We'll make this value constant and let's make this on, enter, select our target, change to a string and let's try it out on the iPad. So it's currently off, I push the button, it's on, push the button, it's off, on, off. Nice and simple. Like I said, this is great for, let's say you want to show um, what articulation you're on, uh, what is your grid set at, is it quarter notes, eighth notes, things like that, or just maybe you wanna show playback. Are you playing or stopped? All sorts of different things and different ways you could use this. Thanks for watching. Like I said, this is just part one of the tips and tricks for your template. I'm gonna release the second one in a few days, so be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, so you can check out that next set of tips and tricks. And if you have any questions, be sure to put those in the comments. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.